I was clever enough to uh, pass this by uh, Jeff Zagansky, so if it's too long, it's his fault. In October of last year, I developed pain in my left hip, and I suddenly couldn't urinate. I wasn't really surprised when the test results came back that my PSA was 137, and my CT scans confirmed that I had terminal metastatic prostate cancer. Uh, those are two scans. All of the red ring things are uh, deposits of cancer. And those are just two scans, two slices of my scans. There's only one treatment for metastatic prostate cancer, castration, either chemical or physical. It's not curative, and eventually your cancer mutates and becomes castrate resistant, and death shortly follows. The side effects are pretty obnoxious, as you would expect, leaving many patients as physical wrecks. It increases the incidence of Alzheimer's, heart disease, diabetes, loss of muscle mass, and fatigue. I have a strong faith and have a wonderful, and had a wonderful, purpose-filled life, rich with accomplishments, family, and lifelong friends. I decided that castration wasn't for me. And if I couldn't find other less debilitating treatments, that I would do my best to die with dignity. I did, however, have what I believed were two good treatment paths to pursue. The first one open to anyone with faith is prayer. 10 years ago, I had a patient with an unresectable liver tumor. There was no curative treatment for him, just palliative chemotherapy. This patient rejected chemotherapy, and instead his church created a prayer chain that extended around the world. With prayer as his only treatment, this experience, uh, uh, with prayer as his only treatment, the tumor shrunk, and he was alive and disease-free five years later. So this experience prompted my study of prayer and the healing capabilities of the human consciousness. It's beyond the scope of this talk, but suffice to say, there is very solid scientific evidence from credible institutions, including Stanford and Princeton, that supports this concept. So I embarked on trying to harness prayer for my healing. Since I didn't belong to a church or temple, I set out to harness prayer by creating a video to ask people for prayers. My plea was to all religions and denominations. I was convinced it didn't matter if the prayers were from Jews, from Muslims, from Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, or even intentions put out there by secular agnostics. They could all have a positive effect for me. Tens of thousands of people around the world eventually prayed for me. The second path which I pursued was somewhat more unusual, since I was the only patient in the world to whom it was available. Ironically, it was actually made possible by my friends and colleagues of the Harvard class of 74, some of which are sitting in this audience today. I've spent most of my career pursuing an immunologic treatment for cancer. Six years before my diagnosis, my Harvard roommate, Jim Mesaw, his wife Carol and I developed an invention that could create a cancer vaccine while the cancer was still in the patient's body. If successful, it could potentially be a major advance helping innumerable cancer patients. We contacted Malcolm Friedman. Malcolm? Where are you? 74, who became involved in the project, helping with the experimental work and getting us back together with Jeff Zagansky, another Lowell House friend. Jeff provided funding and business expertise, which gave the project a chance for success that would not have been possible otherwise. I started successfully treating patients with metastatic prostate cancer using the technology more than four years ago. This is my first patient. His name is Joe Lee. He had weeks to live. He was in hospice, going to hospice. He had tubes 
draining his kidneys and his bladder. And every few days, he would have to have transfusions because he was bleeding uh, extensively uh, from his bladder. He had a single treatment, uh, four years post-treatment. He's disease-free. He's jet skiing. And a study of the patients that we have treated since uh, is to be published shortly. And we also have positive signals in other cancers as well, pancreatic being the most uh, compelling one, I think. So you see, I actually had a, an excellent alternative to castration. There was only one problem. I was the only person in the world that knew how to perform the procedure. <laughs> so I approached my old friend, David Vaughn, Harvard class of 74, and a urologist. We had worked extensively together on another cancer project, a male lumpectomy for localized prostate cancer, similar to a lumpectomy for women uh, for breast cancer. I explained to David that I would have spinal anesthesia, and while I was awake, I could walk him through the procedure, <laughs> and he just had to follow my instructions to successfully treat me. That's what he said. <laughs> so I eventually convinced David to help. And on December 3rd, 2018, we both performed the procedure. He performed his part with skill and good humor. How did it turn out? Well, I am blessed to report that with thousands of people praying for me, and an innovative cancer treatment of our own design, I am now cancer-free. You can see my PSA was up there, and now it's well below one, and all of the tumors that I had radiographically are now gone. So how did I convince our classmates to get involved in this project? Well, it was by appealing to their sense of purpose. It went something like this. We are all highly successful and accomplished in our own right. And we are clearly coming to the ends of our career. How many individuals get to do something so significant, such as cure cancer, so late in life? Who can say that all the experience we have had up until this moment wasn't meant to prepare us for this grand purpose. I had thrown down an irresistible gauntlet and was taken up by my Harvard 74 friends with enthusiasm. Excuse me. It was a very poignant moment for me this morning during the service when it suddenly occurred to me that if not for my friends, I would have been on this, that list this morning. There they are. I am humbled um, and awed by the talent and accomplishments of my classmates in this audience. Whatever your field or expertise, we could use your help in achieving this goal of curing cancer, because this is already a de facto Class of 74 project. <laughs> We created, I created this video to get people to pray for me, and then we put a second version or a second part together for my treatment and whatever my results were going to be. And I'm proud to say that in my first foray into um, entertainment, I won an award. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh. We have, these, we have these hats available for sale. It says, Harvard 74 Curing Cancer. They're only $6 million a piece. <laughs> Thank you.